A TFR, also known as a temporary flight restriction, is an area in which we as remote pilots cannot fly in. Also, a lot of manned aircraft do not have the ability to fly in a TFR. The only time a manned aircraft can actually fly into a TFR if they have pre-approval by ATC or if they're on a flight plan, they're communicating with ATC and they know that that aircraft is planning on flying through that TFR. So a TFR are areas in which there is something going on, something major going on. It could be a sporting event, the president is coming in. It just depends. It depends on how important this operation is. When this happens, the FAA does not want other aircraft to be around in the area. It makes sense. If the president's coming in, they will block out a huge amount of airspace just for the president so no other aircraft can fly in that area when that TFR has been created. A great example of a TFR is Disney World. I have Disney World pulled up here on Sky Vector, and if I take my cursor and I move it over the Disney World TFR, it shows that it's red. Red means active. It means that that TFR is active, which means if I have my unmanned aircraft and I'm planning on flying inside of Disney World, I just can't do it. I can't do it because of that temporary flight restriction. Now, how do we know how far the, of altitude that this TFR goes up to. Well, since I'm hovering my mouse over it, I see a little bit of information. I see the TFR with the code, and then it shows security. So it's for security purposes for Disney World. It's for the amusement park. It makes sense. You have a lot of people in one single area. They don't want drones to be flying over their amusement park because it's a hazard. You really aren't supposed to, under regulations, to fly over people anyways. But the TFR has really been created for Disney World to really ensure that there are no drones flying into that amusement park, and also there are no other manned aircraft that are flying too low above Disney World. So if you notice here, it shows effective 1027, so October 27th, 1500 Zulu, until further notice, from surface to 3,000 feet AGL, and it's valid until further notice. So although it's a temporary flight restriction, this TFR, I know this just from looking it up, it's been effective since 2014, which means that Disney World constantly has to update it with the FAA. So even though it's considered temporary, it's been there since 2014. And it goes from the surface to 3,000 feet above ground level. The reason why they chose that number is because what happens at Disney World pretty much every night? Fireworks, right? They shoot them off at Cinderella's Castle. It's a big show. All the kids love it. But if you have a manned aircraft that's flying too low when they shoot these fireworks off, it causes manned pilots to lose their night vision. When they're flying at night and they see a bright flash of white light, they see these fireworks popping all over around them, it causes them to lose that night vision to where they don't have the ability to see as well as they need to. So the FAA decided, okay, 3,000 feet or above, that will ensure the safety of manned aircraft flying over Disney World. It'll also ensure the safety of everyone visiting Disney World. All of the customers, all of the families coming into Disney World can know that they're safe because they're under a TFR, which means that manned aircraft can't fly over it and unmanned aircraft can't fly over it unless they're above 3,000 feet. So if you have a drone, you definitely can't fly inside the TFR of Disney World. It makes sense. Keep in mind, TFRs are updated. A TFR can come out every single day. So the only way you know if TFRs are active or if they're going to be active or even if there is a TFR in that area, the only way you can do that is through going online. 
you can't pull out a paper chart of this sectional and see this TFR displayed on that sectional chart, that paper chart. It just doesn't happen that way. These are updated all the time. They're not going to be on a VFR sectional chart. So another example of a TFR that's currently not active is over here. This is around Cape Canaveral. So if I hover over, it tells me the time that it's active. So space launch, effective 1122. Today, it's the 19th, it's November 19th. So in three days, this is going to be active. Once it becomes active, this color changes from orange to red. So that tells me as a drone pilot, if I'm planning on flying in this area, I can't fly on November 22nd. And it goes from surface to 18,000 feet. So it will actually be live in three days. If you want to find out more information about that TFR, you can simply click on it. As I click on it, it brings me to another page and it gives me a little bit more information. However, if you just hover over, it pretty much gives you all of the information that you need to know as a remote pilot of when it's active, where it starts at, where it ends at, and when you could actually fly in that TFR. So right now, I could actually fly in that TFR because it's not active. It's there to show you that it will become active soon. The FAA puts it out to show you need to know that this one is going to be active in this amount of time. So these are TFRs. So remember, TFRs, it could be over areas such as amusement parks, space launches, sporting events such as a Super Bowl. It, they put a TFR over the stadium and president comes in to the city, they throw a TFR over the entire airport. For example, if the president decided to come to Orlando International, they would throw a TFR that looks a lot like Disney World over most of the area of the Orlando airport. And as you can see, Orlando is a Class B airport. So they would probably cover the entire Class B airspace. They would cover a giant section of this airspace under a TFR just to make sure that other aircraft are not flying in the area at the time the president comes in. TFRs can also be issued for natural disasters. So if a hurricane comes in, National Guard needs to go and do search and rescue. Power companies are needing to restore power. There's a lot of different flight operations that are needing to be accomplished. So a lot of times the FAA will issue a TFR to keep other aircraft out of that area. And sometimes they change these altitudes. Sometimes they raise it up to 200 feet. So that way, if you're a drone pilot, you have your commercial drone license, and you're contracted out to help with these natural disasters, you can still do a flight. But you can only go up to 199 feet. So you can still accomplish what you need to accomplish for the operation. You, can, you can't just go to 400 feet now. You can go to 199 feet for that example. So it still gives you the ability to fly underneath the TFR. So that's why it's important to always look at TFRs before you go out and fly and see if they're affecting the area that you're going to operate in and to also see what altitudes are they starting at and what altitudes are they ending at because not all TFRs start at the surface. So these are TFRs or temporary flight restrictions.